Hey, Craig here. So the CNC press brake and the CNC uh, notcher are all built. Uh, all the CNC conversion has been done. I'll, uh, in this video, I'm going to walk you through making a part on it. All right. So originally, I wanted to make a whole video series uh, about building this whole thing. With the amount of time that it takes to do that, I just wasn't really going to get you know the whole thing done in time. Uh, I actually filmed some footage of the manufacturing of this. You know, I, I'm going to go back and um, edit that footage and make videos about that. I didn't do anything about the CNC conversion and the uh, the shear, but uh, anyways, I thought I'd just give you an overview of what we've got here. So so basically there's a, uh, a one inch thick base. It's one by six by, I think it's like 32 uh, cold rolled steel. Um, there are two one inch um, linear um, posts. Those were, were from McMaster Car. They're actually uh, threaded on the bottom, so I have uh, uh, screws bolting it down. Uh, there were counter bore, counter bore into this about uh, half an inch or so. I've got uh, the springs. The springs were from McMaster Car also. These are uh, special springs for for like a press brake for uh, a die set, what's called a die set. This is basically like a, a die set, but it's a press brake die set. I've got four of the die holders. This is American style uh, die holders. Uh, it's basically one inch wide by five eighths deep. So I've got four of those. Um, I've got two dies here. Uh, this is a uh, design, this is a, uh, these dies are made for 18 gauge material. They're 3 eighths of an inch um, wide, the opening. Um, it, they're uh, machined at uh, 75 degrees. The, uh, the punches are also 75 degrees. These are 8 inch long punches. The upper part here, uh, this is all basically all cold rolled steel. You got the, uh, the upper support arm for the, the tool holders um, and I've got the uh, the uh, I don't know what I would call the ram support. It's, it's, act, it's basically acting as a, a ram support uh, or a ram attachment and it's also like uh, you know trying to strengthen it up, reinforcement for it. Uh, seems to be working pretty good so far. I've got two half inch bolts bolting through. Uh, these are all bolted down with uh, 3 8 bolts. I've got two angle stops, one on either side. Um, it's basically just uh, like an oval machined part. Uh, I've bolted through with carriage bolts and I can adjust the height. Basically I just uh, lower down the, uh, the die until I form a 90 degree. I use a, uh, a 45 degree square uh, to get a, a 90 and then once I've reached that 90 I verify that there's actually a 90 degree bend in the material. I then set these and, uh, and tighten them up. And that gives me my repeatable angle. I've got a uh, foot pedal here that I got off of, I don't know what it was, I think it was Amazon. Uh, got a foot pedal, got the air lines here. I've got the uh, combo uh, air dryer oiler here. Um, back here I have the, I don't know, the linear rail. This I got off of Amazon. I think this was like $170. Basically just bolted that on to, I bolted a piece of half inch uh, cold rolled onto here and then just screwed this on here. I've got the shoe here. And over here, I have the uh, Roper Whitney uh, notcher. And I have added uh, basically two of those linear rails over here with shoes. Um, this is the, the shorter one here because it doesn't need to travel as far. 
and that's a longer one, a little shorter than the one that's on the uh, the press brake, but and all those wires go down to a control box. I decided to go with the uh, gecko drive, so I got an, a gecko drive box and a power supply. I bought the gecko drive directly from gecko because I figured if I needed support on it, it'd be easier to talk to them. As far as the wiring goes, it, it uh, this runs off of DB9, so I just bought uh, DB9 uh, solderless connectors. You just hook the wires on. Um, I got an old, uh, I didn't expect it to be this big, but I got an old Windows 7 PC through uh, eBay uh, for like a hundred bucks. Well, I also got the uh, the Contour shuttle here. I got the uh, the Pro in case I needed more buttons. Okay, cool. So I guess we'll uh, go ahead and make a part here. Uh, as far as the uh, using getting Mach 3 to to make stuff on uh, a press brake and the uh, the notcher here is actually relatively simple. I just wrote some simple g-code. Actually I tried to do it write the g-code in uh, in Word in a notepad but it wasn't working right so I ended up going to uh, teach uh, MDI. There's like a, a teaching function right here and I basically just taught it. You know I just put the steps in and it created the file and then then I went through ahead and, and uh, modified it. I put some M zeros in here to stop it, you know, in between each one. And, uh, you know, re really pretty simple. Uh, a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. Um, so I've got the code loaded up here. Okay, so the first part, of course, is to uh, cut the material. you got to cut it before you uh, bend it on the uh, press brake. Um, this is... Uh, the first part I had made, I had some of the dimensions off or something. Um, but this basically is what we're going to be uh, making here. So, alright, so I've got the, uh, the shuttle set up so that this button right here is, uh, you know, cycle start. Uh, they don't call it cycle start in the setup for this thing. I don't know, run file or something. But uh, I don't know why they don't just use the same terminology, you know, but... Okay, so so the first thing, I've got my uh, stock right here, um, so I'm just going to push the uh, cycle start, and this should advance to zero, and this should come to uh, 2.4 something, um, so push this. And that's coming forward, okay. Uh, I've got it at, uh, I think, 60 inches per minute uh, on the rapids. I had it at 120 and I had some, I don't know, some issues losing steps or something. Um, but, uh, alright, cool. So we'll go ahead and put the, uh, the stock in here. i got uh, 45s on each side here. You line that up and cut this, flip it over, do the same on the other side, and then go cycle start. That stays the same because the, the cut's the same depth, so Alright, now I don't really have a lot of material to align with on this side. I may have to stick another shoe, not one of nearly as wide I don't think. But put another shoe over here uh, for this side, but, but uh, we'll see how it goes, see what kind of accuracy we can get like this. Okay, I'll do the middle notch. Okay, we will uh, advance to the next part here. 
I'm going to push the uh, cycle start button again. This should advance to the same distance. I've actually got a gap in between these so I can do the, uh, the second bend. Um, I didn't do that before, but I'm going to try that and see if it actually... Uh, see if it does anything with, with the bend, because I don't want to have to keep moving this all the time. But, uh, all right, so I've got that back about against the shoe there. In the middle. It's a little hard to do with the compressor running right there. Um, okay, so it's um, it's hit the stops here, and uh, let me take this out. See what we got. But uh, looks pretty good. Let me put the uh, protractor on here. So we got. Yeah, it's actually you got to do both ends though. So, yeah, it's like 90, 90 and a half, that's pretty close. See the other side. Yeah, it's right on there, so angle looks good. Okay, well, let's go ahead, let's see what the, the line looks like with this gap here. Um... I don't really see any evidence of any marks. Of course, there's tool marks right there. There's actually a, um, a film. I got this from McMaster Car. It was like the cheapest place to buy it if you, uh, if you don't want to buy a whole roll of it. It was like $3 a foot or something. Uh, some kind of uh, polyethylene or something or other. You put it on top there to... Uh, to reduce the marks, uh, but I didn't see any significant marks. The, the one thing that I do notice is, is on these bends, when there's an angle like this, is there's this um, flare up right here, and I'm not sure uh, what to do about that. Um, I don't know if any of you worked in the uh, sheet metal industry. Uh, no, what it is, I mean, it doesn't happen, it, it has something to do with the angle, I guess. Um, so yeah, if anybody who works in sheet metal can give me some kind of tips on how to avoid that, that'd be great. Um, I'm, I'm assuming if I, this is air bending. Uh, air bending basically means three points of contact. When it's bending, it's only touching the, so, the, the top, basically the tops of the uh of the v there and the the tip of this bottoming is it just basically smashes the whole thing in bottoming is usually done with a 90 degree um punch and die um so i don't know if uh have to anyways let's try this uh next band here um cycle start to advance to the next position You can hear they just touched right there. All right, let me uh, back that off and see what we got. There we go. Ooh, pretty close. Almost, almost close enough to work. Of course, the problem is I'm still having this, this right here. It's not uh, laying flat. So, but 
Anyways, that's the uh, that's the first part. And uh, all right, well, cool. Anyways, to give you a better view of this flare-up that I was telling you about, the I don't know what you'd call it. I I tried looking online, you know, press break flaring, uh, cut on an angle. Couldn't really find anything on it, so... Alright, well as I said before, I've got some additional footage on the, the machining and stuff of the, the majority of this, so... Um, I'll try to uh, put that together and upload it for those of you who are interested in, in seeing that. Um, Alright, well, um, I guess if you have any questions about uh, how I put this together, the electronics or anything, just uh, feel free to leave any comments down below. Uh, if you liked this video, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, if you like to subscribe, there should be a button over here. And as always, thanks for watching.